Level 1. Early Firearms We're starting at the very beginning with early firearms, the hand cannons, arquebuses, and matchlocks that first appeared on medieval battlefields. These weapons were basically metal tubes filled with gunpowder and hope. Picture this, you're a medieval knight in full armor feeling pretty confident about your sword skills when suddenly some peasant with a primitive firearm appears. Sure, it takes him five minutes to reload, the accuracy is about as reliable as medieval weather predictions and there's a decent chance it'll explode in his face, but when it works, your expensive armor suddenly becomes decorative metalwork. The arquebus was the weapon that democratized warfare. No longer did you need years of training to become effective in combat, just point the tube in the general direction of your enemy and pull the trigger. Some enthusiasts may disagree, but these early firearms were game changers despite their limitations. The matchlock mechanism was revolutionary for its time, even though using it meant carrying around a burning match cord, which was about as stealthy as a marching band. Rain was your worst enemy, and forget about rapid fire. You had enough time to write a sonnet between shots. But here's the thing. These primitive weapons started an arms race that continues to this day. The moment someone figured out how to launch a projectile using controlled explosions, warfare was never the same. Level 2. Rifled Firearms. Enter the rifled barrel. The innovation that made spray and prey evolve into aim and claim. The addition of spiral grooves inside the barrel transformed firearms from area effect weapons into precision instruments. The Kentucky Long Rifle and similar weapons of the 18th and early 19th centuries could accurately hit targets at distances that would make smoothbore musket users weep with envy. Suddenly, marksmanship became an art form, and skilled riflemen became the snipers of their day. This is where we see the birth of specialized military roles. Sharpshooters, skirmishers, and light infantry armed with rifles began picking off officers and disrupting traditional battle formations. The age of standing in neat lines and taking turns shooting at each other was coming to an end. The American Civil War showcased both the potential and the limitations of rifled firearms. Weapons like the Springfield Model 1861 could deliver accurate fire at ranges that traditional tactics hadn't accounted for, leading to devastating casualties when commanders hadn't adapted their strategies. Some enthusiasts may disagree, but the transition from smoothbore to rifled weapons represents one of the most significant leaps in military technology, setting the stage for modern warfare. Level 3. Repeating Firearms the invention of repeating firearms was like going from a flip phone to a smartphone. Suddenly, everything you thought you knew became obsolete. The Spencer repeating rifle, Henry rifle, and early revolvers changed the game entirely. Instead of the traditional fire, reload for an eternity, pray you don't get charged by cavalry routine, soldiers could now engage multiple targets without the awkward intermission. The psychological impact alone was tremendous. Imagine being on the receiving end of sustained fire from weapons you thought could only shoot once. The Winchester lever action rifles became legendary, and for good reason. They offered a balance of firepower, reliability, and ease of use that made them popular with everyone from cavalry units to frontiersmen. The ability to fire multiple rounds in rapid succession was revolutionary. But here's where things get interesting. Repeating firearms also introduced new logistics challenges. More shots meant more ammunition consumption, which meant supply lines became even more critical. Wars were increasingly won by industrial capacity rather than just tactical brilliance. The Gatling gun deserves special mention here as an early attempt at mechanizing rapid fire. While not quite a machine gun in the modern sense, it demonstrated the potential of sustained automatic fire and pointed toward the future of warfare. Level 4. Machine guns. Welcome to the level where individual marksmanship takes a back seat to the philosophy of if you shoot enough bullets in the general direction of the enemy, statistics will handle the rest. Machine guns fundamentally changed warfare by making traditional infantry charges obsolete. The Maxim gun and its descendants turned battlefields into what military historians politely call target-rich environments. World War I demonstrated the devastating effectiveness of machine guns when used defensively, leading to the trench warfare stalemate that defined the conflict. These weapons introduced the concept of suppressive fire. You don't necessarily need to hit the enemy. You just need to make them keep their heads down while your allies maneuver. 
its psychological warfare combined with kinetic effects. The crew served nature of machine guns also changed military organization. Now you needed teams trained to work together, spare parts, more ammunition than ever before, and the industrial capacity to keep everything supplied. Warfare became as much about logistics as tactics. Different machine gun designs emerged for different roles. Light machine guns for infantry support, heavy machine guns for area denial, and aircraft mounted guns for aerial combat. Each required different training, tactics, and support structures. Level 5. Assault Rifles Assault rifles represent what engineers call optimized solutions. They found the sweet spot between the range of a rifle and the rapid-fire capability of a submachine gun. The St. G-44, AK-47, and M-16 family changed infantry tactics forever. These weapons fire intermediate cartridges that balance manageable recoil with effective range. It's the Goldilocks principle applied to military hardware. Not too powerful, not too weak, but just right for most infantry engagements. The selective fire capability meant soldiers could choose between precision single shots and rapid fire depending on the situation. This flexibility made individual soldiers more adaptable and effective across different combat scenarios. Mass production and standardization meant entire armies could be equipped with similar weapons, simplifying training, logistics, and maintenance. The modularity of modern assault rifles allows customization for different roles while maintaining commonality of parts and ammunition. Some enthusiasts may disagree about which assault rifle design is superior, but the impact of this weapon category on modern warfare is undeniable. They've become the standard infantry weapon for militaries worldwide because they effectively balance all the competing requirements of modern combat. Level 6. Precision System Modern precision weapons represent the pinnacle of marksmanship technology. We're talking about systems that can deliver accurate fire at distances that would have been considered impossible just decades ago. Advanced sniper rifles equipped with sophisticated optics, environmental sensors, and ballistic computers can engage targets at extreme ranges with remarkable accuracy. These systems require extensive training and represent a significant investment in individual soldier capability. Smart ammunition that can adjust its trajectory, guided projectiles that can engage moving targets, and integrated fire control systems have transformed precision shooting from an art into a science. Environmental factors that once required extensive experience to account for can now be calculated automatically. The development of these systems reflects a broader trend in modern warfare toward precision engagement rather than area effects. The ability to neutralize specific threats while minimizing collateral effects has become increasingly important in contemporary conflicts. These weapon systems also represent the convergence of multiple technologies, advanced materials, precision manufacturing, electronic systems, and sophisticated software all working together to extend human capabilities. Level 7. Directed Energy Weapon We've reached the realm of science fiction made real. Directed energy weapons that use concentrated energy rather than projectiles to engage targets. Laser systems, microwave weapons, and plasma technologies represent the cutting edge of military development. These systems offer several theoretical advantages. Virtually unlimited ammunition, as long as you have power. Speed of light engagement and precise control over energy delivery. No ballistic trajectory calculations, no wind compensation, no ammunition logistics, just point and apply energy. Current laser systems can disable drones, detonate explosives, and damage equipment. As power sources become more compact and efficient, these capabilities will likely expand. The U.S. Navy has already deployed laser systems for defensive applications. Microwave weapons can disable electronic systems without physical destruction, offering non-lethal options for crowd control or equipment neutralization. These represent a fundamentally different approach to conflict resolution. However, these technologies face significant challenges including power requirements, atmospheric interference, and effectiveness against certain types of targets. They're currently more promised than widespread reality, but the trajectory of development suggests they'll play an increasingly important role in future conflicts. The transition to directed energy weapons may represent as significant a shift as the original adoption of gunpowder, a complete change in the fundamental physics of warfare. If you found this historical journey interesting, 
hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into military history and technology. Let me know in the comments which level you found most fascinating or if you think I missed any major categories.